Hi Stitchers, this is my update on my whips and the stash that I've purchased for the month of June. I have done very little stitching so this has the potential to be one of my shortest videos but we'll see. Um, before I go into that I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody who's watched my videos who has possibly sat to the end of a few of them, I think that would be quite an achievement. Um, I've only sort of been doing these YouTube videos for well, just a little under a month really and I've been amazed at the response that I've had and thank you to all my subscribers, I've got sort of 250 subscribers which just seems crazy and I hope you continue to enjoy my videos, I've certainly enjoyed making them and getting to know a few of you through your videos and the comments that you've left me thank you to everybody who's commented on my videos, I really appreciate the time you've taken to do that and I'll always try and reply because I think if you've taken the time to make a comment I should take the time to acknowledge that so really huge thank you to all of you for the response that I've had from my uh, YouTube videos it's been amazing um, secondly um, about the Mir Mirabilia stitch along thank you to everybody that sort of registered an interest into wanting to sort of join in with me in stitching um, a mirror design in 2015 Obviously I understand that Mirabilia is not necessarily to every, everybody's taste, um, case in point my sister again, she doesn't like them either. Um, I know Stitching May mentioned that she was going to do the black work and um, save the stitches sampler as part of a stitch along with a few other stitches. So, you know, don't stitch a Mirabilia for the sake of it, but if you're like me, you're desperate to stitch one or you've had one in your stash for a long time, then please, you know, feel free to join in on our little YouTube Mirabilia stitch along. Um, what I'll do, if it's okay with everybody, is perhaps um, towards sort of the end of the year, December time, I'll just do another short YouTube video just talking about our stitch along. And then if everybody who still wants to participate by that point, because obviously I understand, you might say, oh yes, I want to join in, but things happen, life gets in the way, and you might find that when it comes to January, you can't do it. It's not a problem. But for all those stitches in December that are still up for joining in, I'll do a short video and then I'll just ask you to comment underneath with the chart you're going to stitch um, and perhaps the, the method that you're going to use to update us. So either um, your channel, you know, say I'll do video updates or it might be your Instagram username. So in my case, I would put that I'm stitching red and that I'm going to be updating everybody via my YouTube channel and my Instagram feed, which is at Mrs. Milky, at Mrs. Milky Bar Kids Stitches. It's a bit of a mouthful. And that way, we'll know all the stitches that are taking part in the Mirror Stitch Along, and we'll able, be able to make sure we're subscribed to their channels or follow them on Instagram so that we can make sure that we all encourage each other as we stitch along together on our Mirabilia designs. So I just wanted to say that. Right, um, now on to my stitching progress. Now this will probably take about two minutes because I've hardly stitched anything. For several reasons, um, namely when it's summer and it's hot, although today the weather has taken a drastic turn for the worse and it's raining and miserable, but for the last few weeks it's been really hot and um, when it's sunny and hot I have the um, attention span of a gnat so um, I don't sit still for a very long stitch. Um, and also obviously there's been Wimbledon on the telly and the football and stuff so I've been distracted, but enough excuses. So here's my meagre stitching progress. Um, I only stitched on two pieces, that's how bad a stitching month this has been for me, that's quite unusual. Um, I've stitched on um, my Chatelaine Hortus Viridarium and I finished part three. So just to remind you, um, this is what it looked like last time you saw it. So there's part one and part two. And this is what it looks like now. So there you go. Uh, I think there's about 200 rice stitches, something ridiculous going on in the outside border there. And basically, the finished size of the piece isn't, as you can tell by the size of the fabric, it's not much bigger. It sort of goes, uh, let's see, sort of up to that point, so it's not much bigger than what I stitched already. But you can see, I think I showed it in my other Chatelaine video, the little rice stitches in the corner. It all, all going all around and in the corner there that gap that will be filled by um, um, a crystal of some sort so yeah that's that one so I, I still made my pact of stitching a part of my chatelaine every month um, I didn't stitch on, on any either of my heaven and earth designs um, I think 
Probably the reason for that is I stitched, oh, I don't know, about two or three pages worth on them the previous month and I find that if I do a lot of stitching, like a real chunk of stitching on my Heaven and Earth designs, um, I sort of lose my little stitchy bug for them a bit. And so what tends to happen in my rotation is that I do a month of full-on head stitching and then a month of all my other bits and pieces of stitching, but I always try and stitch a part each month on my Chatelaine. Um, my second piece that I stitched on, if you follow my Instagram feed, you've probably seen it, um, is by the Primitive Hair. It's the Red Riding Hood design. So this is a picture of the finished piece, what it looks like. And I started this, I made a note, on the 17th of June. So this is, you know, only a few weeks stitching. But it was quite good to stitch to um, whilst watching the tennis because it only contains four colours. But this is what I've done so far. You can see I've stitched the wolf. And I've done the top half of red. This one stitched on 36 count um, Edinburgh linen, cream linen. And it uses, as I said, only four colours of floss. So it uses black and white DMC, or in my case I'm using anchor. And the other two colours it uses are Gentle Art sampler threads. And they're really, one of them's really pretty colours. So her red riding head is stitched in this colour, which I just absolutely love. I think it's the perfect colour, really perfect colour for red riding head. It's called um, Buckeye Scarlet, and I think um, I'll probably end up using uh, a bit more of this in the design, but I think it might become one of the colours of floss in my permanent collection because I just think it's a fantastic scarlet colour, uh, and it sort of goes a bit darker in places, so I think it's perfect. And the other thread colour it uses is um, another Gentle Art Sampler thread, this time in um, Pecan Pie. So it's only four colours, so, you know, very primitive, lives up to its name. Um, the only thing <laughs> that I changed, <laughs> as I do, which isn't very primitive, is I don't know if you can see, but it's got snowflakes, uh, snowflakes in it, and I've just done a few test, just test, and um, I've stitched those in um, Petite Treasure Braid PB10 same colour that I use in my heaven and earth designs just because I think you know snowflakes need a bit of sparkle so for the biggest snowflakes I may well um, use the white but possibly with um, a strand of blending filament chronic blending filament in the same colour instead so we'll see how I get on with that um, so yeah huh, that's my stitching whips update so um, you know if I finish the video there that would be um, a miracle really and Especially as my last video was um, ridiculously long. I still feel quite bad about that, but anyway. Um, so yeah, those are my whips. So now I'll just show you the stash um, that I've had, uh, I've got in this month. Um, first of all, it's pretty boring, so I haven't got them out, but I had to get a couple of, well, a couple, no. I had to get seven or so DMCs for another Primitive Hair project that I'm, I've, I've kitted up, ready to go. It's, um, again, in the Fairy Tale series, so... I'm stitching Red Riding Hood now and I've got Sleeping Beauty kitted up so I had to get some basic DMCs for that and I also had to get another skein of um, Gloriana um, Blythe Green for my Chatelaine design so you know that's pretty run of the mill well silks aren't run of the mill but you know what I mean DMCs things that I needed to finish um, not to finish but to carry on stitching the charts that I'm currently stitching so um, now we come to the fun stash um, Let's start with fabric. Um, now, I was quite excited to learn this month that um, one of um, a mem one of the members of the Cross Stitch Forum, whose stitching I really love, we stitch similar type of designs and we both love hand dyed fabrics and threads, although I think she loves hand dyed fabrics more and I love hand dyed threads more. But anyway, we share um, a love of all things hand dyed. I was really excited to learn that she has decided to set up her own um, hand dyed fabric little business, which I think is absolutely fantastic. I think it's every cross stitcher's sort of little dream that they could somehow, you know, do the things they love for a living, one of which would be stitching or dyeing fabric or owning a, you know, Needlework store or something like that. So I think it's absolutely fantastic that she's decided to go into that. The name of her um, little business that she set up currently only on Facebook at the moment, but she is hoping to have um, a web page done by the summer. She's a very busy person, 
Um, so hopefully she'll be able to do that. Um, but at the moment you can purchase purchase her fabrics through her Facebook page, which I will of course link to. And the name of her company is Chromatic Alchemy. I think it's a really cool name. So um, as I can't resist hand dyed fabrics, especially small pieces of hand dyed fabric, I have sort of a, a thing for them. I don't know why. <laughs> Usually with um, larger designs, larger pieces of hand-dyed fabric, normally I need to have um, a reason why I'm buying those fabrics. Which is going to sound silly when I show you what else I've bought. It'll all make sense in the end. Um, but when I see little pieces of hand-dyed fabric, I just can't resist them. So I have to buy some uh, fabrics from her. So, it's going to be a lot of rustling now when I open these up for you. I think the majority of them, yes, three of them are 32 count Murano, again, for any um, American viewers, that's 32 count Lugana. For some reason, in this country, in the UK, um, Zweigart have decided, well, it's what the fabrics are known as, you have 25 count Lugana, 28 count Brittany, 32 count Murano. They're exactly the same fabric composition, they are all 52% cotton, and 48% rayon, but they've just got different names. Whereas I think in the States and maybe other places, it's just called 25 count, 28 count, 32 count, Lugana, and that's it. So it can get quite confusing sometimes. Um, right. Yes, yeah, so I've got three pieces of Murano and one piece of um, 28 count Dribbleland. So let's show you some little pieces so you can see what they're like. As you know, I'm a bit obsessed with purple, so anytime I see any fabric with any sort of purple in, I um, have to buy it. So, I really like that piece. It's got a lovely feel to it as well, Jogolan, I love that fabric. So, yep, yeah, there's that little piece. And the next piece, the Murano, is sort of a lovely golden, sort of summery, or even autumnal colours really. If you can see that with the light, it's that piece. I just find that these little pieces of fabric are really good for small designs. I don't know about you, but I have hundreds and hundreds of freebie designs, legitimate freebie designs, I hasten to add, um, from the web. There are so many fantastic designers out there that have blogs and websites and who generously put up freebies of their designs. I mean, you only have to think about... You only have to think about Chatelaine freebies, freebies, for example. You know, they're proper designs on their own. They're not just some, you know, little pieces that somebody scribbled, scribbled down and put up on the internet. You know, they're well thought out, beautiful designs in themselves. So I did uh, promise that I would look through my freebies and small charts and make sure that I stitch something on these fabrics because they are beautiful. Here's another piece, lovely sort of red orange. I love that, it's very vibrant. The other um, company, um, when I'm thinking about charts to stitch these on, I was thinking about Clouds Factory charts, because I've got a few of those, and there's one that I really love. Um, it's, a, uh, I can't, don't know if you remember that I did the Modern Artists chart um, with the five little artists caricatures. There's another one with English authors, which I just love. So I think I might have to get that chart next month's brush allocation and I think I might stitch it on this piece of fabric I love this piece of fabric so much it's sort of it's showing up quite well although it shows up it's less it's more mottled than it's showing but it's pink with some sort of yellows highlighted through it it's just really pretty fabric I just oh, I just love hand dyed fabric I could just go on about it for days but anyway yeah so those are four pieces so I would recommend, if you like your hand dyed fabrics, go along and check out Chromatic Alchemy's Facebook business page. She's got some fantastic fabrics on there. She's just started out, she literally started trading on, uh, I think about the 1st of June, at the beginning of June. So it's sort of very early days, but I know she's got all um, Hardanger fabric, Ada fabric, um, linen fabric, Joblan. Um, and she's just um, got an account to get some opal fabrics, um, sparkly fabrics, which I of course love. Um, so I'm just so thrilled for her because I, I just think it's fantastic. What a way 
you know, to spend some time dyeing fabric and selling it to other stitchers, especially when you've got a real passion for it as well. So I know that her fabrics are going to be amazing quality and she's going to come up with some great colours because I, I've seen the pieces that she's stitched and the type of, and the colours of fabric she's used and it's just going to be awesome. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, on a side note, um, I'm also very excited because I have um, ordered my supplies for the Mirabilia Stitch Along. So I've ordered some fabric um, from the Crafty Kitten. I've done a, basically I've done a layaway for the um, water lilies I needed because of course I didn't have those in my stash, even though I have several water lilies threads. Um, the bead pack, the chart, and I've ordered some fabric from Dawn at the Crafty Kitten, which looks gorgeous. But I I did mention to Sam that I was um, looking for some hand dyed fabric to stitch red on, and she said that she might sort of see what she can come up with custom fabric custom hand dyed fabric wise so that would be exciting if she if she can come up with something for red that would be awesome uh, but anyway so those are those four little 9 by 12 cuts always handy to have in the stash now um, my next bunch of stash um, you may I think I mentioned before um, I have I'm part of a monthly thread club and a monthly fabric club um, via Jodery Designs so every month I get 10 threads from the, her main range, Michelle's main range. I don't know how many threads the regular range goes up to now because she keeps adding to them all the time. It used to be like 150, but now I think it might be in the 170s. I don't know. Um, yeah, so each month through my letterbox, I get 10 threads and a cut of the limited edition fabric for that month. I also get the limited edition thread. Each month, M Michelle dyes a, a thread um, and dyes the fabric in the same colours which is only available for that month so I get the limited edition thread and fabric and then 10 threads in um, numerical order from her main uh, thread range so I was incredibly excited uh, <laughs> to see this fabric I knew I would love it because it had purple in it um, this I've forgotten the, what the name of it is now I haven't got the um, packet in here but it's the same I don't want to give you the wrong yeah, it will be, it's called Out of Orbit, and it was a limited edition for the month just gone for June. And I just love it. As soon as I got it out of the packet, I knew I would. But this is um, 28 count Brittany Opal. It's an opal fabric. I love opal fabrics, anything sparkly. So I just loved that fabric. You can see the little sparkles on it. I always like getting, um, I like the Brittany fabrics and I specifically like them in opals because the colours tend to blend a bit more when they're dyed. As I've said before, obviously different hand dyed, different uh, fabrics and the composition dye, take the dye differently and I just really like uh, the softer colours that sort of um, blend together well. I really like Brittany opal fabrics so I'm really excited about stitching on that one. I think... Um, I think I know what I might stitch on that actually but again see that this breaks the rule that I just said to you that I only buy fabrics for a specific reason which on the whole is true apart from when it comes to Michelle's fabric because I love the colours that she comes up with and I think it's great to be able to support somebody um, you know in, in this in these businesses you know support your local needlework store your hand dyed fabric you know um, makers because if you don't then they'll go and then you'll be sorry. So, yeah, I always look forward to, to the end of the month when I get my fabric and threads from Shell. So these are, this is the um, limited edition thread. dyed. Um, the fabric is dyed using the same colours as the thread. So you can see that it's, it's greens, greens, purples and blues. So, you know, it's really pretty. There you go, there's the details there. So my other ten threads... I don't know, do you want me to go through them one by one so you can see them all? I don't know. I get quite excited looking at threads, as you probably know. So, in no particular order, we have Moody Blues. Lovely blue colour. Back then you can see it. We have Toxic Potion. Dark and Stormy. Indian Summer. Oh, this one's pretty. Pixie Dust. 
that would make a lovely uh, hand dyed fabric actually. Um, Birds of Paradise. Pumpkin Patch. Oh, I like this one. This is Love You Lots. Lovely purple and pink. You can see why I like that one. And this one is Autumn Hues. That one's lovely as well. They're all lovely. I say this every time. And last but not least, this one's Jelly Tots. Now you can see by the thread number, that's thread um, 140. So now you have a rough idea exactly how many <laughs> of Michelle's threads I have in my collection. Of course the limited threads aren't numbered either, so I've got at least 12 of those. So anyway, let's not talk about how many, how much hand dye threads I have, because there's lots. Yep, so those are all my pretty colours and all my stash. As I've said before, um, I do try and um, limit my stash buying to a certain degree. Um, I find sometimes you can get carried away and you end up buying stash that you don't necessarily need but at the same time you've got projects in your stash that you desperately want to kit up so you know there's a fine balance between having stash for the sake of it and still having money left to actually kit the projects you love um, so yeah and I know in the back of my mind that I've got some projects that I desperately want to do that are coming out soon or in the future um, there's always a chatelaine that I want to stitch. I know I've mentioned before there's some Northern Expressions needlework designs that will be coming out in the autumn that I want to stitch in silks. So I'm very aware that I do like <laughs> I do like to stitch um, projects using expensive materials. Um, I read something on um, the internet which kind of summed me up. It said that um, I've been cursed. I was cursed at birth by an evil fairy to have no money and expensive tastes, which is basically me. My dad often says that I have champagne taste at lemonade prices. So I do, when it comes to stash, um, I do my best to use what I have where I can. And I have quite a bit, so I've got no excuse. And then for the special projects, so like for example the projects that I mentioned in the wishlist tag, then I will get the exact stash required for those um, charts. But for other charts that I have in my stash, I make do with what I have. Because I've got no excuse, I've got hundreds of threads, so you know, you don't have to use um, stipulated threads. You can get into a bit of a mindset sometimes and think, oh, I've got to use those threads, that's what it says. But you've got to think outside the box and use what you've got, really. So there you go. Those are my uh, Jodery Designs threads. So there you go. Those are my whips and my stash. My, lit my little stash haul for this month. Um, hopefully I will try and do a video like that every month, doing a little roundup of what I've stitched on and the stash that I've bought. Um, so I will try and remember to do that. So that's that video. I was going to go into projects that I've kitted up um, because usually I find if I'm not stitching, it doesn't mean I'm not thinking about stitching. So I usually shop <laughs> or you know shop and stash or I start kitting up projects. Um, I was going to show you those, but you know, you've, my videos are too long as it is, so I'll stop here and I might do another video on that. So what I will say is that if you have any ideas for videos you'd like me to do, I know I still haven't done any sort of stash video yet, I still don't quite know how I would do it. I know um, somebody commented, and I think she wanted to know about the silks that I had in my stash, and I know that if I do a stash video it will be quite long so if there's anything specific that you want to see that you think I might have in my stash or you want to see um, I don't know any anything else I've sort of mentioned and you thought oh, I'd like to know a bit more about that please comment because then I or, or whatever it is because then I could do like a request sort of <laughs> video that sounds strange doesn't it but there might be several stitchers that want to see different things and I can just do a whole video just on those little bits and pieces I know Aisha at Sticky Stitch wanted to see a bit more in a bit more detail about my Lowry stand, for example. It's one of those things that unless you, you know, it's all very well and good reading up about it on the internet, but when you can actually see it and how it works, um, that's quite helpful because not everybody has access to um, a needle workshop where they can go and see these things. So if there's anything like that you want to know, or perhaps you want me to show you how to do a certain stitch or, or something random like that, if there's, if there's anything 
that you think, oh, actually, I'd like to know this about Amanda stitching or whatever, then please um, post a comment and I'll be more than happy to elaborate on anything or to show you whatever I have. Anything that you think that will help you, encourage you in your stitching is all good with me. So that's my little update video. I hope um, you're having a good day wherever you are in the world and I'm hoping that the sun might shine a bit more here. I'm not sure. I think that's our summer now. I think it's just gone. So it probably means that it will be good for my videos because I'll be doing more stitching. This always happens when it's sunny, I just don't stitch very much at all, I make up for it in the winter. But anyway, enough waffling from me. Thanks for watching and happy stitching.